Introduction to Dissection Equipment Always wear gloves and safety goggles during dissections. This tray holds most of the tools you'll use when performing dissections. Two groups will share one tray of tools. Each tool has a place and most of them are labeled to help you sort the tools as you put them away. This is a dissection pan. It's got a rubbery pad in the bottom. The pad is a flexible surface for pinning specimen parts to, and it helps to prevent breaking scalpel blades. Please don't cut the pad on purpose. When you're cleaning up, pull the pad out of the pan, rinse both sides, and allow it to dry. You'll have rulers so that you can measure different parts of the specimens. This is helpful for comparing organs in different specimens, like the heart of a frog and a pig. These are sharp probes. They're good for teasing apart delicate organ structures, like breaking the membranes that separate the segments of this worm so that the skin can be pulled back. They're also good for pointing, like when you find teeth inside the stomach of a crayfish. These probes are blunt. They have a rounded end. They're a little less precise for pointing, but they're more gentle to the tissue of the specimen. Here, they're used to pull the muscles of the crayfish away from the exoskeleton so that it can be removed. And here, they're being used to examine the intestinal tract. Scissors can be used to cut away membranes and organs that you've already examined. But they're also used to cut through thin exoskeletons, like the carapace of this crayfish. And to make the first cuts through the epidermis to avoid damaging the internal organs. Forceps work like tweezers for pulling skin back or pulling an organ aside so you can see underneath. Here, forceps are used to hold the skin of this worm open so that it can be pinned. Use forceps to hold tissue that you're cutting to keep your hands away from the blade. Pins are used to hold a small specimen in place, hold epidermal layers open, or to label structures so that you can easily point them out while reviewing. The handles and blades of scalpels are stored separately. When you come into lab, the group before yours may have left good blades on the scalpel handles, or you may need to attach new blades yourself. Scalpel blades are in this box with the razor blades. Be careful using them since they're made to cut through tissues like our skin and muscle. Scalpel and razor blades are used for cutting internal membranes and muscles. Avoid using them to make the first cuts through epidermis because you could damage the organs underneath. Placing a blade on a scalpel. Notice the diagonal edge at the bottom of the blade. It needs to line up with the diagonal line on the scalpel handle for it to fit properly. The handle has a long, thin notch along the sides for the blade to fit into. The blades come in foil packages with cardboard strips to keep them from cutting through. Peel the wrapper back from this end and keep the wrapper over the blade while you attach it to the handle. This makes it a little safer to hold the blade, but be careful. Hold the blade, still covered by the wrapper, match up the diagonal lines, put the handle under the opening in the blade and slide it forward and up so the blade fits into the notch. Pull the blade out of the wrapper and check that it's secure. Removing the blade from a scalpel handle. This box is the blade remover. The wide part of the opening allows the blade to slide in and the narrow notch at the bottom allows the handle to slide out again. If the blade breaks or gets dull or rusted, slide the blade end of the scalpel into this opening. Line the scalpel up with the notch and slide it into the box. Squeeze down on the top of the box to hold the blade in place. Give the handle a wiggle and it should pull free easily. If you leave blades on the scalpel handles when you're done, Make sure the blades are pointed down so the next students don't get cut. Place any broken or rusty blades inside the sharps container, unless you've used the blade remover. It's a sharps container too. Please don't put the cardboard wrapper from the razor blades 
or the foil-like package from the scalpel blades into the container. They're not sharp, right? The biohazard bin is for disposing of specimens and their parts. The step at the base of the bin means you don't have to use your hands to open it. Be careful not to allow dissection tools or pins to fall in. Remove tools and pins from the pan before taking it to the bio bin. Remember to close specimen containers after all groups have their specimens. This keeps the specimens from drying out and getting harder to cut. Wash skin that's come in contact with lab solutions thoroughly. Make sure to read signs around the room for extra instructions about disposing of specimens.